a stranger around here at Kendall Park. Many of you know him. Many of you know him better than even I know him. Uh, but it's been a blessing to get to know Andrew the last several years. He's been in and out um, on breaks and visiting folks in this area. Last time he was here, I had a conversation with him, and I had mentioned something about an internship. I asked him what he was doing in the summer, and he kind of said that he had already some plans. He's at West Point, and his summers are pretty busy with uh, different things. But he said, uh, you know, I'll think about that. And uh, I didn't really think anything of it. knew that his summer was full. But then he texted me a little while ago. He called me. I forget which one. And said, hey, I have a couple weeks uh, in the summer, and if that internship thing is still open, I'd love to come for just a couple of weeks and to serve and to learn and to, and to grow at Kendall Park. And, of course, we said, yeah, that would be awesome, Andrew, to have you. And what I appreciate about Andrew, I don't know him as well, um, but I'm looking forward to getting to know him these next two weeks, is that even though he's at West Point, he's going to be an officer in the military um, in a few years, he still has a desire wherever God puts him, whether overseas or or stateside, he has a desire to serve the Lord, be involved in local church ministry, and be a light for the gospel wherever God puts him. And uh, and I love seeing that in a in young people and uh, in a young man that's maybe in a, a secular setting, uh, but still has a desire to serve the Lord with his life. You know, we're all in Christian service. It's not just the pastors. We're all in Christian service. Uh, wherever God has put you, you're to be a Christian full time, uh, no matter what vocation you have. And I appreciate that testimony that Andrew has, and um, you'll look forward again to, uh, you'll be, you'll enjoy getting to know Andrew, uh, even though he's only here for a couple weeks. So make it a priority, get to meet him even tonight. So I want to invite Andrew to come up and share from God's word and share a little bit of your testimony tonight. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. I would just like to say thank you to this church so much, not only just for having me for these next two weeks, but also uh, many of you were here when my dad and I were here. Um, about seven to ten years ago. I was in sixth, sixth to eighth grade. Um, and that this church really meant a lot to us during those times. Those three years for my dad and I, those were, that was a hard time for us. We were away from my mom and my sister at home while I was at school here. And uh, if, it, if it weren't for this church here, I, I don't think we would have made it. Uh, just without people having us over for dinner. I mean, my dad and I were trying to cook food, but I mean, people having us over for lunch after Sunday, um, coming here Wednesday nights, having the youth group, um, just, just getting to know a lot of you guys very well over those th three short years uh, just meant a lot to our family. Uh, meant a lot, made it, made an impact in my life for sure. Well, I'd like to thank Josh and Pastor Brown for having me. As Pastor Brown said, I'm only here for two weeks, unfortunately. Uh, fortunately, Pastor Brown's leaving for those two weeks, so <laughs> don't have to put up with him too much. No, I'm just kidding. we joke, we joke, but uh, it seems like every time I come around, they they they're going somewhere else. So I don't blame them. Uh, but as I said, I was here for three years um, in middle school, but uh, many of you guys know me from that and know my dad, but I was very fortunate uh, to be born into a Christian family uh, from Greenville, South Carolina, so there's a lot of strong Christian circles there, good Christian church, uh, good, good Baptist church, and uh, just looking back on my life, um, there's three things that, that have really made an impact in me. First is God's grace in my life. Um, I'm sure, sure every one of you can say, you can look back in times and see God's grace in your life. Second thing is, is my parents' constant, consistent influence in my life. Their constant love, constantly praying for me. When, when our relationships were, were the strongest, when, when they weren't so strong, um, they were always praying for me, always loved me, and just their influence, they've influenced me more in my life than anyone else has. And then the third thing that I've seen is just just the impact of the local church and the importance of the local church, uh, not just in my life, but in just, in just in the community and the encouragement that it's been. I was, I was born in a Christian family, like I mentioned earlier. I have one, one older sister. She's about two years older than me. Um, and, and from a young age, I, I knew, I didn't always appreciate it, but I knew that my parents heavily invested in me, whether that was taking me to sports practices, my dad taking me out to the field, coaching me, where I was homeschooling, my mom would homeschool me, teaching me, uh, putting up with me all day in school, uh, making me go to music lessons, sitting down with me, making me practice, um, taking notes while my, my teachers were giving instructions and then, and then regurgitating them to me while I was practicing. Didn't always appreciate that, um, but now, now, I, now I wish I did more looking back and, and I see the purpose it served because the many things that my parents invested me. I've been able to use to serve the Lord. Just, just small things here or there that they saw that I needed, they saw that were important, have opened up opportunities for me that I wouldn't have. If it was up to me, I just would have been, I would have played sports 
or done what I needed to do in school, nothing more, and just, just gone out and had a good time. But my parents saw, saw the opportunity that God had given me, invested in a young age, and saw, saw, where, where, saw areas where I could serve the Lord and, and put me into places to be successful and, and just to train. Because no matter what they always told me, no matter what you go do, whether you're in the military, in the ministry, in the civilian sector, just whatever you're doing, there's always a place to serve the Lord in the church, in one-on-one discipleship, in your family, um, of course. And, and that's something that they stressed at a young age. Uh, I got saved when I was four, um, just one night. I think we were under the weather, some of us were under the weather on a Sunday night. So we, didn't, we went to church in the morning, we didn't go in the evening, but we had a Bible study in the evening, at just the four of us as a family. We were talking about angels, and I just I had so many questions that night. And my parents led me to the Lord at the young age of four years old. Shortly after, um, actually, against they, my parents wanted me to wait a few years um, to mature a little bit before I got baptized, just so I really knew, you know, the symbolism of baptism, but and and everything that was involved with that. Um, but right around a year after I got saved, maybe even less, I just walked up the walked up to my pastor and said, Pastor, I want to get baptized. Uh, so I talked about it a little bit more with my parents. I got baptized shortly after I was saved. And uh, just, just growing up, I was in, I was homeschooled, um, so strong Christian education for my mother. Um, but they also let me get a taste of a secular environment, whether that was through playing sports um, in just little league, um, YMCA, basketball leagues, and, or, or be, being in music, music classes, group music classes, uh, institutes, like week-long summer programs, where they, where they let me have friends and let me interact with, with those who are unsaved, but also sheltered me enough to, to show me this is a difference. This is why you're different. This is, this is important to keep your testimony, to be, to, to be an outreach. And that, that stuck with me um, until today, just the, the importance of being a strong testimony in a secular environment. Uh, I'm at West Point right now, it's, it's a strong secular environment. The military is a tough environment for, for Christians, um, which, which just makes the local church that much more important, like I mentioned, to me. Um, I've been very fortunate with local churches in my life. I, I, I was, grew up in, in the local church in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, when we came up here to, to uh, visit the school, the American War Choir School in Princeton, uh, we, met, we met the Yaps family. And they had come to this church, and we, we visited this church the summer before, and um, by God's grace, this was, the, this was the first church we visited in the area, and the only church we ever visited in the area. Uh, once we were here that summer, and then later in the fall we came, uh, the Browns let us stay at the apartment uh, for, for a few weeks until someone actually from the church helped us find a, a condo for us to rent. Um, we lived just a few, few condos down from Tim, who was at the church, we were able to uh, meet with him. And just the church was so loving to us in that time. They, they saw just, just a father and a son um, just here, and then they just took us in. And just, just having a church that was just so strong from biblical preaching, strong music, allowed us to serve, um, and not having to, not having to spend time looking around, just right in our backyard too, 10 minutes away, was just such a blessing. And, and part of that just just gave us the security and the peace that we knew that the Lord's will was for me to be at that school at those times. Because in the summers, we'd go back, and every summer, we'd have the same conversation. You know, Andrew, do you want to you continue this? Um, it's been tough, and we prayed about it a lot every summer. We always came back and finished it out, graduated after eighth grade. And if it weren't for this church, I, I, I don't think I would have been back after that first year. And this church really gave, gave me that first taste of, of serving in the church. Growing up, I'd always played cello. Uh, with my sister played violin, I always sang, and we weren't quite old enough to to be part of special music, be part of the orchestra in our church. It was a pretty large church, but we did have some opportunities to serve, play music here and there, um, sing here and there with my sister mainly. Um, but here, really, just what showed me that I could get plugged into the ministry, even as a middle schooler, I was I was sitting playing playing cello. Um, sang in the choir with my dad. My dad and I did special music every once in a while. And just, just having, having that opportunity to serve in the local church really set at a young age, um, just where I saw that I had the ability to serve, even at a young age. And 
Um, I just have so, so many good memories from this church, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to be here for two weeks. I wish, I wish it would be longer, but I promised my mom, promised my parents to get home for just a little bit uh, before I have to get back up for summer training and all. So after, after, this, after the three years here, I went home. Um, and it was, it was an adjustment uh, going back home, but it was nice. It was a good adjustment getting back. Uh, our family was all in the same state. Um, I, was home, I went to be homeschooled. Uh, I was homeschooled for a few years. I did part-time at the public school, part-time at the Christian school for a few years. And then junior and senior year of high school, I was fully enrolled um, at the public school in my hometown, playing sports there, there all day. And the Lord, the Lord was working in my heart at that time. I knew I was different. I knew I was separate. But there's a lot of things that my friends had, that my friends did, that I had, I had interest in, and I wanted a little bit of it. But uh, thankfully for the youth group that was there, my parents kept me grounded and rooted. And just small things, just small things looking back, whether it's a teen retreat our youth group did, whether it's working at uh, camps in the, Christian camps in the summer, uh, revival services at church, just being in church every Sunday and serving in church, just small things kept me rooted and grounded in the world. And, and by God's grace, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, um, I didn't fall along with many of my friends into the secular environment and, and lose my faith and, and just, just wa- didn't wash away and, and stayed rooted and grounded. And a big thing was that in the summers during my high school years, um, after my freshman year in high school, we were looking for a missions trip um, to do. And I didn't speak any languages, so I wasn't really interested in going to a different country. Um, there, was, there was a few mission trips that our church were doing with groups. I didn't didn't want to go on like a big group mission trip because I wanted to get I wanted to find a mission trip where I could serve in a local church where it wasn't just you know going and do construction somewhere going out and passing passing out tracks um, so somehow my parents my parents worked at the camp the summer before they were engaged 20 years uh, before I first went to the camp but it was a small camp Forest Glen Bible camp in Nova Scotia Canada I spoke English there and and the mission of the camp was to serve the local church there's many very small local churches in that area um, where, the, where the youth would come, the families from those local churches would all come and meet together and gather together there. And just with, with, the, with the talents that I had in music and my, my I mean, who doesn't like, love summer camp? And I, I saw that I could do music there. I could help out with sports, games, um, got into skits, um, landscaping, everything. Everything from serving food to skits to landscaping to music uh, to counseling. Uh, the three years in between my high school years, I went back every summer. I fell in love with the first summer. Um, and, and that really showed me that serving the Lord isn't, there isn't one fit role for serving the Lord. Anyone can. I saw many, I saw many pastors from, from Nova Scotia who would come down and be junior camper counselors, teen camp counselors. I saw... I saw pastors cooking and serving food, painting walls, and then many laymen from churches, just strong Christian men who weren't necessarily called to the ministry, who, who worked a job, worked a nine to five job, came to the camp, served, whether helping through games, serving food. And I saw that, I saw many, many people serving the Lord in different ways. And that really opened my eyes to seeing if I can, if I can serve the Lord by cutting grass, weed whacking, then I can serve the Lord wherever I go. And after those three years um, at camp, I came back after the third year before my senior year after camp, I came back. Um, I had the desire to go into, go into ministry. Uh, there's nothing more I wanted to do than, than go to a Christian school, go into the ministry, and then, and then work in camp ministry. That's, that's what I thought the Lord's calling was um, for, for just the beginning of my uh, senior year. But also before, before my senior year, after my junior year in the summer, I'd also gone up. My mom signed me up for a week-long summer experience at West Point. And, and I went to that. I wasn't necessarily too excited to go to that. It was the week after finals. I finished my final. The next morning, I flew up to West Point for a week. I flew back down, drove up to Canada, spent seven weeks there, drove down, and had a week, and then started, started school. So I, was, I wasn't necessarily too excited about that one week at the beginning of the summer being going to some military camp. Um, but I came, I came to West Point um, that summer for the week-long experience, and I really liked what they were doing. I liked, I liked the idea of 
being a leadership institution, not just the college where they teach you and um, teach you like a, you get a degree and then you go out with thousands of other kids who have that same degree and try to find a job. I like, I like how they focus not just on academics but on leadership and character as well. And, and also serving, serving the country had always kind of been in the back of my mind. I didn't really have any military background in my family. Um, but I, but I, always, I was always open to it. I was very thankful for you know, this country that's founded on freedom of religion, this country that allowed me, uh, allowed me to go to church, allowed, allowed me so many opportunities that many people don't have. So that was, that was always in the back of my mind. But after that summer of camp, after going to that, I was praying about it a lot. I talked to some, some good counselors um, that I would got to know in the camp. And, and I wanted to go in the ministry, but I came back home, was praying about it, doing school. And I, was, I was thinking about it and talking with my parents, talking to some godly men in my church. And something that kept coming up was, you know, there's some opportunities that some, that, that some people just don't have. There's, there's places... There, for each and every one of you, there's a place that you can go, there's something that you can do, and an opportunity that you have that other people don't have the opportunity. Whether it's in your job, whether it's in just your daily schedule, whether it's you, the people, this, you go to the gym at the same time, you see the same people every day. What, whatever you do, there's always an opportunity that you have that someone else doesn't have. And that kept coming up, people kept telling me that. And I knew West Point was, was hard to get into, I knew it's it's relatively small college compared to some other state schools, and so I applied. I applied to. So when it came time for applying to colleges, I applied to so I, over ten. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do at that point. I was I was in between the military, and then in between um, going into the ministry, and it came down to. I I ended up getting into the the top schools that I wanted to go to. And it came down to, do I want to go in the ministry, go to Maranatha? Um, and they also had an ROTC program, which offered a little bit of both. So I considered that for a little bit. But it really came down to, do I want to go to Maranatha and go to the ministry, or do I want to go to West Point? And West Point, um, if you know this, once you graduate from West Point, you sign a commitment. Actually, this fall, if you're a rising junior, so this fall will sign a commitment saying that I will finish the next two years of at West Point, and then I'll commission and serve a total of five years active um, as an officer in the military. So I was looking at that, and I said, West Point kind of locks me in for nine years. <laughs> and I said, I don't know about this. I, I, I liked West Point. I loved West Point. I knew that military was something I wanted to do. Um, and it, it wasn't until we were, talking, we were talking to some friends, we were trying to find a church we were trying to find a church in the area of West Point. And, and I, kinda, I could sense the God leading me towards West Point um, because I knew it would give me opportunities to serve and lead people and be a spiritual leader that, other, that not everyone has that opportunity. But I was still kind of on the fence a little about it. And we were trying to find a church in the New York area. And I was thinking, a fundamental Bible church in New York, there's really nothing around West Point. It's a tiny town. It's gonna be hard to find. So there's one there's one guy from we remember he was from upstate New York. He came to Bob Jones. He went to our church when I was very young. And we remembered him. So we my mom, um, his in-laws go to the church that, that were at my home church in Greenville, Faith Baptist Church. And somehow we 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 got in contact with him and asked him, Hey, do you know of we remember that his dad was a pastor in New York. We said, Do you know of any churches that are close to West Point that have some sort of ministry at West Point or, or cadets can come? And it turns out his dad, Pastor Snavely's church, Grace Baptist Church, is five minutes outside the gate at West Point. Yeah, Fundamental Baptist Church. Uh, we knew his son well, so we knew where he's, we, we knew his son was a quality individual. So we, we knew we could trust the church. And, and similar to how we found Kendall Park and came here and didn't have to visit another church, I went to West Point uh, my freshman year. Also, we call him plebes at West Point. I'm a plebe year, I went to West Point. And before, before our basic training in the summer before um, was the first time I met the pastor. Um, I've never had to visit another church. I, not a doubt in my mind that there's a better church out there for me to go to. They've had cadet ministry for 20 years, take a bus, pick up cadets. And that was kind of the, the final, final piece that, 
that really showed me there's a strong local church. They've got a strong ministry with cadets. And that was kind of the final piece that, that showed me that God's will is for you to go to West Point. Everything was, everything was in line. Um, and at that point, I didn't realize how, how important that, that church was going to be. Uh, I didn't realize how important the Christian friends at that church that, uh, that I'd meet were going to be in my life. Um, my first year there, we weren't allowed to leave post at all, uh, COVID restrictions. Also, uh, plebe years, you don't get much freedom at all anyways. But there was, a, there was a major who was teaching at West Point, um, Sean Christian. He was, he was attending Grace Baptist Church, and we were able to hold Bible studies at his house because he lived on post. And if it weren't for that, if it weren't for the church's ministry at West Point, if it weren't for Major Hoke um, being stationed there at that time, um, the only interaction um, with other Christians or only interaction with church I would have had was through a laptop screen. But because of that, because Pastor Snavely was able to come on to um, West Point, we were able to meet at his house. I was to meet a strong group of Christians um, that were dedicated to serving the Lord even in, a, even in a secular environment, even in a rough military environment. And growing up, I'd known the importance of the local church I'd seen the importance of the local church in Nova Scotia and how important these tiny local churches were to so many, so many of these families spread out through Nova Scotia. But it wasn't really real to me because I grew up in South Carolina, Greenville, South Carolina, which is oftentimes called like the buckle of the Bible Belt. I mean, there's, there's churches everywhere and, and there's a lot, of, a lot of strong churches down there, a lot of Christian, good Christian communities down there. So I'd never, I'd never experienced a lack of church. I'd never experienced a lack of Christian friends. Um, until I, until I went to West Point. And that's something the Lord's been teaching me um, these last two years. And some verses I'd like, um, like to share with you about that is the first thing the Lord's been teaching me in the last two years, um, I still have a passion for ministry, and I'm still open to it after my military career. But the, the one thing, the main thing that, one of the main things God's been teaching me in my last two years at West Point is there's, there's a desperate need for spiritual leaders in the military and at West Point right now. Um, as an officer, um, depending on what branch you go, but as an officer, you, once you commission, you go and you'll, you'll take a unit and you have anywhere from um, like 20 to 40 soldiers beneath you. Under your control, um, you've got other senior leaders in the group, but you're, you're the responsible one in that platoon as a platoon leader. And the impact that platoon leaders have on their unit they're the ones who call the shots. They're, they're the ones who are the brain behind the operation. And they tell the, the squad leaders and the platoon sergeant, and, and they get it done. But the influence that a platoon leader has, and then as you rank up, you just keep getting more and more people under you. The influence that you have in the position is very important because a lot of people join the military for many different reasons. Some join it because their family's been in the military their whole life. Some join it because they don't have any other jobs. Some of them, because it's either, you know, you dropped out of high school, they're on the streets, either go to jail or, or join the military. So there's many people from different walks of life, and there's something that the Lord's been teaching me is that I can be a missionary wherever I go in the military. I'll have 40 people under me, but I'm also going to have, I'm also going to be at a military base somewhere. Um, I don't know where I'll be posted, but the way officers work, you move around every, every two, three years. If you stay at a place for four or five years, you're pretty lucky um, to stay at the same place. But that just... That just allows me to, to be a missionary where I'm at, whether it's, whether it's in the U.S., whether it's abroad. Uh, just, going, just being a missionary, being an encouragement to local churches, um, just getting involved in local churches for that short time I'm able to be there. Um, and the Lord's been showing me um, that because of, because of the way my parents invested in me, because of the experiences I've had at, at this church and other churches, just being part of the ministry, that I'm able to do that throughout Wherever the Lord has me go through my military career, my career afterwards, the Lord's the Lord, I will have an opportunity to serve the Lord wherever I go. And then the second thing the Lord has been teaching me is, um, actually yesterday at a commissioning ceremony for one of the graduates from our church um, up in up in Highland Falls, uh, my sponsor Major Hoke from last year, he he moved away. He's at um, MIT. He was saying a word of advice to her, and he said. If your colleagues and your soldiers aren't, if they don't, from knowing you, if they don't, whether it's playful 
whether it's professional or unprofessional, if there's not some sort of tension because of your because of your faith, because of your belief, if they're not making fun of you a little bit here or there, if there's not little comments about your faith, then you're probably not living your faith strong enough. And he said that to me yesterday, and I got a chance to talk to him, and just having him as a mentor in my life um, is, is so important for me, because just seeing an officer and his family serving the Lord where they're going in the military it just gives me a role model to follow after, and just gives me someone who I can ask questions and talk to. But when he said that, it, had, it went perfectly along with what the Lord's been teaching me this last year. It's just not being afraid to be different. Not being afraid to, to stand up and speak out to, to friends who are just doing the wrong thing. Or to friends who are, who are doing something and say, you know what, I'm not going to be involved with this, that, or the other because I'm a Christian, because of my faith. This is what I believe. This is, this is my convictions. And, and I've had to do that a few times. Um, and it's not always easy, because there's peer pressure. Um, you want to fit in. You want, you want to have an influence in other people. Um, you want to be respected if you're going to be in a leadership position. And sometimes it seems like when you say no, when you, when you set yourself apart, um, you'll get backlash. You'll get some disrespect. Um, but something that's, that's been encouraging me is just looking at characters in the Bible who did that. And there's a few verses that the Lord's just been using uh, recently, just, just what he's been teaching me about making a difference, just being fully committed and not being afraid of what's going on around you. Uh, the first verse I'd like to, like to share is with you is Joshua 24, 14, and 15. In Joshua 24, 15, is a very well-known verse. A lot of people have it framed in their house. Uh, the second part, as for, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And not that, not that that's not an important part. That's, it's a, a lot of people have memorized that verse for a reason. But I want to focus on verses 14 and then the beginning of 15. So here Joshua is um, reminding the Israelites of what God has done to them. He's reminding them he brought them out of Egypt. He part of the Red Sea and all these, all these great works that God has done. And I've shared with you just, just small things of what God has done in my life. Um, if I could share everything... Um, that God has done for me. You guys wouldn't want that. We, we, we'd be staying up all night. But I share with you small parts. And looking back, God has, God's grace, God, God has been a part of my life in, in a very strong way. Um, but here Joshua is reminding the Israelites of what God has done for them. And he gets to verse 14. Verse 14 he says, Now therefore, fear the Lord and serve him, um, serve him in sincerity and in truth. In sincerity and truth, uh, that's challenging to me because a lot of times we want to, especially in the secular environment, it's easy to go to church on Sunday, Sunday night, with your Christian, um, having a Bible study on Wednesday night. Uh, we have a Bible study on Wednesday night on post. And then throughout the week when I'm not with my Christian friends, it's easy to, you know, everyone, all my friends know I'm a Christian. All my friends know there are certain things I, I do and I don't do. But it's easy to kind of, you know, walk away from that a little bit during the week, try to gain some respect, a little peer pressure here or there. But in sincerity and truth, that's, that's hypocrisy. If, if I'm living one way on Sunday, if I'm li living one way around my group of friends, my Christian friends who go to church with me, and I'm living another way around my company mates, my squad mates, that's not sincerity. That's, that's not true. And then it says, and put, so we need, we need to fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and truth in everything that we do. All 100% of what we do, everything that we have, we need to serve the Lord. And serve the Lord in sincerity and truth, and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And that's challenging for me, because when I look at putting away the gods, I look at what in my life do I want? What, what am I looking for? What is, what is, how do I define success for my life? There's a lot of people, we had graduation yesterday at West Point. A lot of people, a lot of my friends who are first years, that's success for them, finishing West Point, graduating. To some of my friends, success is, is not going to be achieved for them in their view until they reach a certain rank, until they pin general or colonel or, or something special like that. Um, but that's not what the Bible defines as success. Um, 
the Bible defines success as serving, serving the Lord. And the Lord's challenged me with, with things this past semester, whether it's, whether it's positional, um, whether it's different, different power that I have, different influence that I'll have based on my position. Um, that's not success for me. I need to put that away. Yes, I need to strive to do well in my academics, in my, in my military aspects, in my, in my physical tests and everything. But that's, that's not how I should define the success. The Lord's really been challenging me. And, and whatever your, your vision of success in your life, it's, it, it changes from time to time sometimes. You know, where the, Lord's, the Lord has you going, where your, your five-year plan is, where you want to be in five years. That's a common question a lot of people ask. A lot of people ask for, for cadets, they ask, what, what do you want to branch? What do you want to do? Um, how long do you want to stay in the military? What rank do you want to get to? Um, and that, that's not a bad thing to have, have goals and, and aspirations with that. But if they're not centered around serving the Lord, centered around fearing the Lord and serving the Lord, then my vision of what success is for me is in the wrong place. And, and, and it's just it's a reminder to put away everything, everything else, everything that the world sees as success, put away the gods of this world, and just to follow the Lord, follow the Lord and serve the Lord wholeheartedly. And then in verse 15, um, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's, kind of, that's been a prayer for me recently is, is for me to serve the Lord in whatever I do. To choose today. That's not, that's not a, on this date I chose to serve the Lord. When I was four years old, I accepted salvation. I chose to serve the Lord. Not when I signed, I signed to go to West Point. I'm going to West Point. This is where the Lord has me. I want to serve the Lord. Not in a few months when I sign for my uh, five-year commitment after I graduate. That's not, that's not what he's mean more when he says choose today. It's not a specific date and time when you serve. It's an everyday action. It's an every hour. Every decision I make, I need to be choosing actively to serve the Lord. And that's something that at some days it's easier and some days it's harder to do that. And, and for me, just I've been challenged just to put away um, things that I've been influenced by in the secular environment. Put away these these things that are not not 100% honoring to God, and choose to serve the Lord. And then another Bible verse that's that's influenced me, especially recently, is Daniel, um, Daniel chapter one verse eight. And I look at Daniel. Daniel's one of my favorite characters in the Bible. Um, my dad my dad always says, and I love this. Is people ask a lot. A common question is. If you could meet someone from the Bible, who would you want to meet? My dad always says, I'd want to meet Daniel's parents. That's right. and, and, and they're not really mentioned, but you know they did something right. You look at Daniel. Daniel's a young man. He's taken away from his home in a foreign environment. And as I see, as I see myself, um, I wasn't taken away. I, was, I, was, uh, I chose to go to West Point. But it is a foreign environment. It's a secular environment. And I'm away from my parents. Um, still able to call them and everything. But I'm on my own, really. And I'm still under my parents. But I'm still on my own. And, and we, see, we see throughout the book of Daniel, and we see this in, in chapter 1, verse 8. We see, it says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank, Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So early on in the story of Daniel, in the eighth verse of the first chapter, we see he purposed in his heart. And not only did he purpose his heart not to eat the meat, not to drink the wine that they served in the palace, he actually acted on it. He purposed in his heart and said, I'm not going to do this. And he acted on it. He went, he went to the eunuchs and requested of them. And we see many times in the, in the story of Daniel where he acts on his faith and he's not, he's not going to go against his God. He's going to wholeheartedly serve God. Uh, like we saw in, um, in Joshua, Joshua said, choose this day. Many times through the book of Daniel, we see, we see Daniel choosing to serve the Lord, to put away the gods of the countries and to put away um, the position that he has and to serve God no matter what the cost. 
And, that, and that's, also, that's also been a challenge to me, just the purpose in my heart every day, to no matter what the cost, no matter what it takes, whether it's me personally doing it by myself, behind a closed door, doing my devotions every morning, whether it's me going up to someone and, and confronting someone, or, or going up and saying, no, I'm not going to do this. Um, no matter what the cost, I need a purpose in my heart daily. And, and I, hope that's, I hope that's true in your life, that you've purposed in your heart, but not only just purposed in your heart a time ago um, on a decision slip, um, but purposed in your heart daily, not just that, but act on it. Act on it, and don't be ashamed of what's going to come. And, and as, as God's been teaching me to do that, um, it's not always easy. Like I said, some days are easier than others. Some, some people are easier um, to approach than others, whether it's because of positional power, uh, whether it's because it's rank, or just because of who they are, their, their characteristics. But another thing that Major Hoke um, told me, he said, being a Christian in the military is, at times is very lonely. And, and that's true. I, I've been blessed um, where I'm at at West Point to have, have Grace Baptist Church um, and also just to know that I have so many people from my home church, my parents especially, but, and so many people from this church just praying for me on a daily basis. Every time I go home, I see, I see these older couples. These older couples will come to me, families will come up to me, and a lot of them will say, you know, we have your graduation card or, or a picture on our fridge and we pray for you every morning. And a lot of people will come up to me and say, hey, I was praying for you. I got a concussion my, first, uh, my second semester, my freshman year, and I came home, and it, it seemed like half the church came up to me and asked me, and asked me if I was okay. And, and I was fully recovered at the point, and, and I told my parents, I was like, what did you tell, like, what did you tell them that happened? Like, did they think, like, I almost died? Like, oh, I was fine. And they were like, well, everyone, everyone was praying for you. And, and just to know that, it, it's, it, I'm truly humbled to know that. You know, people take time out of their day. People are praying for me, and, and I need—I need it. My, if my parents were here, which they're not, they would tell you more than anyone else that I need prayer, and I do. Um, but not only that, am I blessed to have, you know, people praying for me, but also a good, strong uh, community of Christians at West Point. Um, one of my favorite verses, John sixteen thirty-three. Um, Jesus is speaking to his disciples here, and he's, he's telling them he's about to go away. Um, and he says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And at times, as lonely as it can be serving the Lord in a secular environment, um, as lonely as it can be when I, when I purpose in my heart to do the right thing, and whether it's confronting someone, walking away um, from situations, at times it's lonely, but I know in the end it's worth it, and I know that I'm never alone because the Lord, everything, everything that I've gone through, every, every trial that I face, the Lord is with me. And not only that, the Lord has already conquered everything in this world. We've already won. Any time that I feel left out, any time that I feel left out from something, we'll be rewarded for everything we've, we've missed, every every bit of pleasure in this world we've missed, we'll be rewarded tenfold in heaven when we get there. And, and just knowing that, that Jesus is always with me and I have a home in heaven that he's preparing for me, and just, just knowing that um, gives me peace. And another verse, uh, 2 Corinthians 10, uh, 3 and 4, for though we walk in the flesh, we, don't, we do not war after the flesh, but the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God. Not only do I have someone who's always with me, but when there's a battle that I have to face, I'm not fighting with earthly. I'm not fighting with my own self. Because if I was, I'd be in a bad place. I have, I have mighty weapons. I have God on my side. And no matter what what's the challenge is, I have, always have someone to turn to. And, and I'm so thankful for that. And um, just, having, just having someone to turn to and just having Jesus on your side is, is the best feeling in the world. And I just thank you for this opportunity to share that with you. Thank you, Pastor.